Now, in the 1986, the thing we describe here as Big Bang happened. Essentially, this is deregulation of, of the financial services. There's two acts of parliament passed in the UK to allow this to happen. One, which affected banks, which allowed allowed all banks to deal to deal in all trading. So there was the legal distinction between retail banks, the third people that we think of as banks, and the merchant banks disappeared. They, uh, this, this act all also removed the constraint that foreign firms were not allowed to trade on the London Stock Exchange. So up to 1986, all firms, all names, or member, I'm sorry, members, all members of the London Stock Exchange had to be UK-based firms. Um, after 1986, that was no longer the case, and that indeed had some consequences. The other act, which were to do with building societies, effectively allowed building societies to turn themselves into banks. So building societies up to 1986 were mutual organisations. That is to say, they're effectively owned by their members. After 1986, the law allowed the effectively building society management to buy themselves out and turn the building society into a bank. So that's that made a great difference. It allowed the 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 sort of derivative trading, the new financial products that are the base cause of the financial crisis to occur. If we hadn't had Big Bang in 1986, this couldn't have happened. Um, now, I've just described the two acts of parliament in the UK that, that, that changed this, but in almost all economies, there was equivalent changes in regulations. For example, in the United States, the Glass-Steagall Act, which prevented retail banks from, from investing, um, that, 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 was, that was removed in the mid 80s as well. Um, and in other countries, much the same happened. So after Big Bang, after 1986, I'd say, mortgages um, were no longer held by indiv individual building societies, which were almost certainly now banks or retail banks themselves, but they, they were sold on to investment banks to become part of a mortgage-based security or mortgage-backed security, I think it's more correctly called, a mortgage-backed security on the money markets. The, the mortgage backed security, the MBS, was a derivative new financial product that was based on mortgages, but it, it itself wasn't a mortgage. It was based on mortgage. The reason why it was based on mortgage will become clear as we go through in the next few weeks. But for very quickly, the reason has to do with the fact that mortgages were seen as low risk and therefore derivative products based on mortgages would also be seen as low risk. So if we now look at what happens again, let's say I am now borrowing after 1986, I'm borrowing about presumably a lot more money, 200,000, let's say. Um, so the bank, I go to the same place. I go to the bank or you know, the Halifax, which is now a bank, which before 1986 was actually a building society. However, at the Halifax, the bank, I go to the Halifax bank now, and you know, they, they again investigate whether I'm, suitable for a mortgage or whether I'm likely to default to repayments or not and so on. But now the big difference is once the mortgage is issued, once the banks agree to give me the money, they sell the mortgage agreement on to to the money markets, what would be previously described as investment banks and so on, the money markets, and they immediately get a proportion of the value of the that mortgage repaid back. So let's say to make life easier here, that the the bank issuing the mortgage gets paid 90% of the value of the mortgage so that it immediately has more money to lend out. Now, to be absolutely legally correct here, if I got one of these mortgages, my payments would be due to the investment banks, some, some institution in the money markets. Uh, in, in practice, most people who are taking out mortgages wouldn't have noticed this difference because the the banker of the building society that issued the mortgage in the first place tended to act as agents 
of the money market institutions. So you still pay the money to the originating bank. They just passed it on in some way to the, the, the other institution. Now, that is not the end of the story. I mean, you know, if this was the end of the story, you'd say, well, it's, all that's happened here is the banking system has expanded a bit. But in fact, the really important part of this story is this bit here, that the mortgages held in the money markets were now used to derive other financial products. These were the mortgage-backed securities. Now, the mortgage-backed securities didn't consist of, let's say, 100 mortgages bundled together. They consisted of small fractions of maybe thousands of mortgages all, all, all bundled together. And these were sold on to investors. Again, as I said before, when I was looking at the traditional view, investors here are probably other money institutions. Um, you know, it would probably be more sensible if I, rather than saying investor there, I had said investing institutions because uh, by and large these weren't individual people here. The investors are not individual people. So the investor would pay money, they would make profits on, on hopefully, on these on these mortgage-backed securities, um, you know, and these profits would come from the repayments that thousands and thousands of people are making on their mortgages. Now, the, the, the important thing to keep in mind here is that the MBSs, the mortgage-backed securities, were very profitable investments and therefore demand for these these derivative products increased rather rapidly after they were developed in the 1980s.